Hello guys, welcome back to Pause and welcome back to another Planet Zoo Spotlight video. So today we are looking at the gameplay reveal from the campaign which was released last night um, during Gamescom. So um, what we're going to do is just go through the, um, the footage from this uh, and just sort of talk about things as we get there. So we'll start right here from the alpha in-game footage, and the very first thing we are, um, or sort of the first thing we see here, is a little bit of the storyline and the introduction of a Bernie Goodwin, which is our sort of zoo owner, who's the guy who's talking us through, um, sort of basically the, the, the tutorial. So he acts as a kind of um, a mission giver, and he's going to follow us through this entire. Uh, campaign you know, through different zoos and generally the idea is he, he owns a lot of these places um, and we've come in uh, as a new recruit um, because the guy previously um, retired so that's that's the general idea um, so I'm not gonna pause too much on this first little bit but I will sort of discuss things as we get to it down the way um, when we want to start putting in the, the sort of campaign elements um, but yeah generally this first little bit is just a nice little overview of the zoo itself um, and while he's talking to us he does start in Planko-ish or whatever the, the, <laughs> the language is again I can't remember Planconian I have no idea uh, but then he corrects himself and he does speak in English which is uh, which is nice at least they've, they've sort of um, touched on the fact that yeah he's, he's speaking um, in English because I always thought that was a bit of a strange thing in the Ghostbusters DLC that suddenly they forgot about the fact that they have their own language but yeah it's fine um so one thing i will just point out very quickly this zoo looks incredible really really nice and and seeing it all the seeing that basically all the screenshots and now seeing it in, in sort of person it, it just looks incredible um so this next person nancy jones um so she is a another character that we meet along this journey uh, she is going to basically act um as the i think she's that the head of the zoo the head of the animals or head keeper or something like that so she's um very experienced she's been there years her and bernie have worked for absolutely years and years together um so yeah her having her there as well will also give you a few little pointers and guidance along the way so first thing let's point out here um as we've already sort of gone through this in other footage but let's just quickly look through this um uh the ui very quickly here and just compare to planet coaster so um, obviously down here we've got um, zoo which will be the stats, animal trading so this is where you can buy uh, and transfer of animals and you can also do that through other players, you can transfer animals to other players as well which is quite interesting. Um, exhibit, uh, ex exhibit trading, <laughs> I always struggle to say that word, um, I guess it's the entire um, exhibit which you can trade we don't know i've not seen anything about that one yet but obviously we'll come to it uh, barriers is your fencing more on that later habitat is all the um sort of um bedding and all the stuff like that uh, enrichment items and things nature will be all your grass tree uh, trees greenery all that stuff uh, facilities is uh, again more on that later will be all your little buildings your uh, sort of employee rooms your veterinarian areas and all that kind of stuff um, construction is just the overall topic now for building items and um, scenery and sort of building all seems to be lumped under one and then obviously we have blueprints uh, path and terrain and the multi select tool are all pretty much in the same place uh, and everything else is pretty much the same and um, there's a few little differences like uh, being able to change the weather and things like that um, but that stuff we'll, we'll delve into later so in terms of this campaign then is what we're basically going to focus on in this video and it basically talks you through um, it gives you it kind of is like a tutorial is essentially what this is um, so one thing we will um, as I said as we go through we'll just pause it at various points and point out new stuff uh, there's so much new stuff in this one that we'll be pausing every two seconds and this video will be hours long so we just need to point out little bits like here for example there is a sprinkler which is something which we've not seen yet um, and you might have seen a few of the little um, look like trash cans rubbish bins with little spinny tops outside of uh, uh, the enclosures those are for tips uh, and again I'll point one out obviously on there there's one here this this here 
Uh, if you put these outside of the area, that's where you get donations, um, not tips, donations for the animal welfare. Um, so yeah. Uh, one thing which we I think we do see in this video, if not I did notice on uh, some of the live streams that came out of Gamescom yesterday, is there will be protesters. So if you don't treat the animals well and the animal welfare is quite sort of low and, and the animals are at risk, protesters will come in and will start shouting and causing all kinds of havoc. So uh, it is crucial that we really do uh, think about these animals. Um, so and this also gives you a good look at the sort of the biome in, in sort of general here as well. Um, I, I know I think when I watched uh, Silverette's live stream, he zoomed out quite a way, and it really does look very good. Um, I always thought the outer rims of the biomes in Planet Coaster always looked a little bit dodge, uh, and you could tell that they didn't really transition very well. Uh, these ones really, really look good, um, and that gives you kind of nice rolling hills. This could be somewhere in in the UK. I mean. This wouldn't look at a place sort of like Chester Zoo or somewhere like that. So, uh, really happy that they've improved those, and they definitely seem to have. So, yeah, it's really good. Um, so here it gives you a few little overview looks of different fencing that we can use. We do have a look at the fencing tool a little bit later on in this video, uh, but it does give you a nice overview of the different styles, uh, and, and also it shows how we use them as well. And it, it looks very intuitive and very easy. And this kind of shows you now. Um, where the boundary is so this here you can see this little blue area gives you the boundary of the enclosure uh, and again more on that when we do the um, do a little bit on the fencing later and like I said this here is that little donation box that I was talking about so in here and the animal market then um, this is where you can buy animals basically if you can buy them bring them into your zoo just here and it, it, the, the price is based upon um, the sort of genetics of the animal and the age and all that kind of stuff. Um, so obviously the better appeal of the animal, the more expensive it's probably going to be. And if it's obviously a bit younger and has better genetics, all that kind of stuff. And it tells you down here um, all the information, so its name, uh, it, it's, that's its appeal rating, um, size, all that kind of stuff. And if you buy it, you can add it in, and there's a little time limit on these, so I'm assuming that it just refreshes quite often for different types of animals and I'm guessing it's quite procedurally generated this kind of stuff um, so yeah that's that's how it works with the animal market and um, so in a second I think they do buy one in part of this video and this footage uh, and then basically it will go into like a holding area in your zoo and then you, you tell um, your zoo keepers when the animals can be put sort of put free and they will put them into the enclosures so it gives you that opportunity to buy them and then sort out your um, your sort of enclosures, make sure they're all ready, and then you can add them into your zoo. Um, so then you just click into there like that, and then the little zookeepers come running in. Um, yeah, and put them down. Obviously, not that's not as realistic as it <laughs> we probably thought it might have been, but you know, I think it's a good system. It works quite well. Uh, and obviously, this is a, a first look at um, warthogs, which we did see in the trailer. I haven't mentioned the new animals yet because there's been that many new animals. Um, over the last couple of days, there's no point going through everything. Uh, we'll do a full list just before launch of what we know. Um, but yeah, warthogs are now in the game. Um, so obviously here, it, straight away, you can see on the side that it will tell you what is uh, needed. So this animal is hungry and thirsty. Obviously, there's no, um, there's nothing in this, uh, this enclosure just yet. Um, and if you hover over these areas, it will tell you a bit more information about each one. So obviously the green ones mean it's fine. Orange is sort of on the on the edge of needing a, sort of some kind of uh, assistance. And then when you go red, it really really needs something that to something there, uh, some involvement from you to sort it out. And you can probably just see here actually. I think this guy here might be one of those uh, protesters that I was talking about. I think it does show us a little bit later on, but yeah, just to, to sort of show you that. Um, so obviously here the main thing is it's hungry and thirsty and there's not enough enrichment items so the first thing you obviously need to do is put in um, uh, some food and drink bowls so this will show you in a second how to do that uh, I believe they did say oh heat maps right yeah I mentioned this as well so this heat maps here um, tells, tells you by color and which animals are um, needing assistance so if they're green same as before, they're, they're okay. Any of the other colours, it shows that they need some help. Um, so in here, they will finally, they will eventually put on the um, filters like we have in Plant Coaster, and so you can filter through the different types of animals to make sure you give them the right feeders and, and water bowls and stuff. But generally, you just plonk them in, and then the keepers will do the rest. 
Um, obviously thinking about where to put them, you want them quite near where guests can see, you want them near donation boxes and that kind of stuff. So you've got to always think about that as well when you're placing items. Uh, and also when you're building your enclosures, you want to make sure um, that guests are able to actually see in. And that brings us on to this section of the video, which is going to show us um, basically how to build fencing. So you go into the boundary editors just there, and then you click on whichever one you want. And it's basically very similar to the, um, the system that's in place in Jurassic World Evolution, which we thought it was going to be. Um, it does seem nice and easy nice point and click depending on which fence you use will depend on how how the curves work some fences do not allow curves some do like this one so once you've got the boundary in um obviously from that view guests will not be able to see in which is not ideal um so what you can do there is once you've got an existing fence click on the section um that you obviously want to change and then you, it's simple as just clicking the specific paints and then choosing the new um, fence and it will just change so that's really good um, for if, if you want to make sort of additions once you get into the zoo and, and down the line sort of thing uh, and that works the same as well so there's like one one way glass you can put in as well for give the uh, animals some privacy um, so yeah it works really really well my only worry about that feature um, is that if that's the only way to build fence in then that might be quite um, quite tricky if you just wanted to put a fence on a path or something because there just seemed to be a boundary section which I'm not a big fan of but we'll see I'm sure it'll work quite well when you're not using it for um, boundaries of uh, enclosures but that's still to be confirmed and um, so here you can see an example of one of the one-way mirrors so by putting the feeder and the water bowl just there the animals will still get their sense of privacy but the guests will be able to see in and then if you notice they've put one of the um, sort of donation stations just here to sort of help push that as well so you've got to really think about it um, so those are the different feeders and like I said this is what they're doing here is putting the feeders and the, the um, the bowls in view of the guests just so um, as mentioned they can see in there's no point having it all hidden away because um, then what's the point of coming to your zoo and obviously it doesn't touch on it in this video but we know it's going to be a big part of the game um, education and, and conservation and stuff is going to play a massive part um, so I'm sure also around this area once we get into it you'll want to put TV screens and, and sort of information and maybe like a a, a, a staff member speaking about the animals just to educate the guests as they walk by okay so the next thing we're going to talk about this path just here this kind of blue greeny type um, hex path um, this is one of the staff only paths which obviously went straight up to the enclosures um, and this area just here we're going to put in some guest um, features and, and sorry some staff features um, so this one is um, this is the keeper's hut so this obviously needs to be quite close by to um, an enclosure um, but every single um, room and building and that kind of stuff in this game does require power so that's something new which has been um, obviously added into um, this game so there's different types of power station this one is a transformer and as long as they're in the relative area uh, it will link up so you don't have to have those god awful power lines like in Jurassic World Evolution it will just it will just link up uh, we know from watching a few live streams we have seen solar powers and different size buildings and stuff so there's going to be a lot to choose from if you want to have quite a sustainable zoo you can use solar energy um, but yeah generally that's quite a, a good little system and it seems quite intuitive as well um, and I, will, I do like, really like the addition of the um, of the staff paths I mean that's a really really good um, good idea and it's something which obviously has been taken from a few other games which we've had that over the years um, I mean the, the the most recent one I can think of uh, is uh, Parkitect which uses it really well so yeah I'm glad they've added that in there um, the other thing as well which we've got to think about um, for certain enclosures which require water it, there's more to it than just plonking down a lake and um, you've got to put in water filtration and also power for that to make it make sure it's uh, sort of drinkable for the animals we don't need to be ill from dirty water so that's something else to think about and obviously think, thinking about where you're going to build all the back of house employee stuff when you're building these enclosures now it is going to be quite crucial to not just plonk stuff down and think oh i can't go in for a, a water filtration never mind we'll leave that eh? so you do have to think really think about it um these are sort of a few of the little enrichment items again it will be filtered depending on which animal you're using um 
one thing I will just point out here, I don't think we see it in this video, but I'm guessing this little icon there will be for um, the temperature in the uh, enclosures. It doesn't really touch on it. The only thing it mentions is obviously shelter for rain and snow, but we do know there's going to be temperature regulation in the game as well, where you can put um, heaters and and fans in the in the enclosures to make sure that the animals are at their specific temperature at all times so the biome doesn't really affect it but we'll obviously look at that once we get a bit more footage uh, but yeah there's enrichment items again you want to put them sort of near enough to the windows so the guests can look in um, and see the animals up close uh, if it's a, an animal that's a bit shy obviously put in a, a one-way glass enclosure there and yeah happy days um we will mention about the foliage here there's an incredible amount of foliage in this game like incredible amount um it doesn't really show you much of it in this video but again a few of the live streams that were out and about yesterday um showed you quite a lot and yeah they do look fantastic uh, so in terms of animal shelters then so um as we knew previously and this gives us just a little view of it you can build a shelter out of the piece by piece um, features so you can literally build whatever you want any structure you want uh, and you can design that same as the terrain you can build a little cave or a cavern out of the terrain tools and that will be shelter or they will have a, a whole list of blueprints in the game if you are not as um, sort of creatively minded and want to just play it for a sort of management standpoint you can do that as well so they kind of ticked all the boxes there and um, so this gives you a sort of view of the, how it would work with the, the kind of uh, blueprint style by just sticking in a box which is fine if that's the if that's the way you want to play it that is absolutely fine that's going to appeal to most people um so here it is and again you can once you put in this um enclosure it gives them the uh, protection from all the different weather types you choose where you want to put in all the bedding uh, and also here as you can see at the back that is a i believe that's a one-way glass so um the animals i know you can see a little bit through it but i believe that's one-way glass um, so the animals will feel safe and secluded in their little um, little house, um, but the guests will be able to see in and uh, view them nicely. So again, thinking about all that, positioning of everything is going to be really crucial to make sure we have a fantastic little zoo, um, not only for the animals, uh, but also for the guests. So here it shows us with the different weather types, um, how they are nice and protected inside. Uh, the rain and the, the snow is actually fantastic. I, I will mention this very quickly now. So again, it doesn't go into much detail on this video. Um, when I was watching a uh, Silv's live stream yesterday, um, it's fantastic. So the rain, for example, um, and this is why I think computers are going to fry with this game. There is even animation uh, for the rain dripping and bouncing off walls and fences and roofs. There's that much in this. So if you've got a, a slanted roof, rain will roll down the roof and will drip off the sort of edge of it. Um, so just think of how much processing power that's going to take for any roof in the game to have that sort of extra addition. Uh, and the snow as well is so good the way it lands on the leaves, lands on the trees, and it even leaves like a little ring underneath where it, it hasn't landed. It, it's such, so clever, like what they're, what they're able to do with the weather in this game. When you compare it to what we got in Planet Coaster, which is the most basic thing in the world, to this probably one of the most realistic weather systems in just a, a few years, it is incredible to see. Um, so yeah, more on that hopefully when we when we get a bit more uh, a bit more footage of it. But it does look absolutely amazing the weather system, and I can't wait to see that in action. Um, so anyway, back to this little tutorial. Kind of went off. Uh, um, yeah, went off there. Not tutorial. You know what I mean? This the campaign video. And this also gives us another look here at the um, needs of the animals in terms of terrain. So this will tell you exactly what kind of grass and terrain and trees and bushes and plants that they require to make them happy. And these sliders um, will all move in sort of real time. So it's very easy to see exactly what the animal wants and how to fix it and how to resolve those issues um, by just yeah, putting them in. Um, so that's a really good little system, I do like that. And I think the actual textures as well look a lot better. As you can see here, they seem to blend a lot nicer. Um, Planet Coaster always was a little bit too jarring when you put different textures on the floor. These ones look really nicely blended, so that's always good. Um, and also in here, the coverage will tell you what plants and trees and stuff it needs. So it tells you sort of their, their sort of ultimate biome, what they would like to be in. Basically, what, whatever country they are from, in nature is the kind of foliage and trees that you want to go for so they feel at home uh, and that's how you do it plonk them in and happy days um, 
so yeah generally that is about it for this um, little video I mean it really does show us how it's gonna work out and I, I like the way it's got that kind of narration to it which we thought we would get from seeing how it is in Jurassic World and also I've kind of teased it with the Ghostbusters DLC I'm guessing it was their like uh, little first foot in the plan once they made that addition to the engine uh, but I think it does look really good and I like the way it's gonna talk you through it and explain the systems as you go through, which is something which was lacking from Planet Coaster. It was very much just, right, here's, here's the game, see you later, have fun. Uh, and I think a lot of casual players would have missed a lot of the features because of that, so it's really good to see that they've uh, improved that as we've gone through here. And the game is looking fantastic. Now, don't forget, you can pre-order the beta, um, well, you can pre-order the game now, and the deluxe edition includes the beta, I should say. Um, all the information is in a previous video that we released yesterday. However, it's all down below in the description as well if you would like to pre-order this uh, and also get your hands on that beta, which launches um, in September. Um, the game itself will launch in November, uh, full access in November. So yeah, get it pre-ordered now if you would like to play this fantastic looking game. So that's all from our little deep dive into this video. I know we've not gone into every single one bit and piece of this but we'd be here hours by doing that my my advice is to just watch this through loads of times and you'll see all the little bits uh, like i said we'll continue to put in all these videos up until launch but there's gonna be an absolute dump of information now over the next month or so until we get our hands on this um so yeah stick here with pause games make sure you subscribe stay up to date with all of the latest content and we'll be uh, right here on that beta launch uh, showing you everything we can find in this game but for now, guys, thank you ever so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.